And that followed on the heels of what was arguably an even bigger change. The fact that last October, Xi's political doctrine, known as Xi Jinping thought, was enshrined in the party's constitution. And that may not sound like much to you, but it's roughly the equivalent of Donald Trump making himself a founding father and including Donald Trump thought into the constitution, which would mean that historians in the future would have to pass the meaning of, while Bette Midler is an extremely unattractive woman, I refuse to say that because I always insist on being politically correct. <laughs> And Xi's consolidation of power has been aided by the fact that, unlike many of his predecessors who've tended to be dull bureaucrats, he has gone out of his way to form a cult of personality about himself. For a, for a time, state media called him Xi Dada or Uncle Xi, both of which are objectively weird names for an adult to call another, another adult, but fantastic names for a pair of hairless cats. <laughs> Xi Dada, Uncle Xi, dinner's ready, you creepy weirdos. <laughs> we, need to, we need to address the big elephant in the room straight away. How about the young Pope? Huh? <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? There's a kangaroo in the Vatican. I can't think of anything more shocking to have happened in the last few months. Oh, do you know what? I guess there was that one thing. And so now the United States has a new president, the 45th president of the United States. There he is, Donald J. Trump. That's right. We now live under President Trump. Two words that will never sound normal together, no matter how many times you say them. Like panda mustard or mom's orgasm. <laughs> now, luckily, we somehow escaped Thursday alive. And on Friday, the president took off for a nine-day overseas trip. But the wheels of Air Force One had barely left the ground when this happened. But the New York Times now reporting that, according to a White House document, President Trump in the Oval Office told Russian officials 10 days ago that James Comey, the FBI director, was a, quote, nut job. Now, yeah, that sounds rough, but in Trump's defense, I can kind of see where he's coming from. I mean, the guy keeps hiding in my drapes. <laughs> Who does that? He's huge. I can see him. Dressed like a tree. You've got to know that. And about that conviction rate line, that's not how numbers work. Say they, they've convicted 980 out of 1,000 people, giving them a 98% conviction rate. By convicting one more person, their rate isn't now 99, it's 98.1. You know what? I don't often say this on this show, but I'm going to give this our official stamp of... Never mind. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Let it go. Never mind. Now, perhaps my favourite reaction of all came from this man, who was in a restaurant and witnessed the attacks firsthand. He actually went back to that restaurant this morning to try and pay his bill and tip the staff. And when a reporter asked whether he was worried about his safety, this was his incredible response. We're not going to let these people win. And I keep saying, if me having a gin and tonic with my friends, flirting with handsome men, hanging out with brilliant women, is what offends these people so much, I'm going to do it more, not less. Because that's what makes London so great. It is. And I, I hope, I sincerely hope that that guy is out on the town tonight, pounding down gin and tonics and flirting with every man he sees. <laughs> to you, sir, I say this. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you. But, but the thing is, this story ate up a lot of media time this week, but the allegations were slightly less alarming than early coverage suggested. Take another one of the big claims. A program called Weeping Angel, which can remotely turn a Samsung TV anywhere in the world into a secret listening device. One CIA hacking operation called Weeping Angel. Weeping Angel. If you've got a Samsung TV, it's... you think you're watching TV? Oh, honey, that thing is watching you. Okay. okay. First, she should deliver all of the news. <laughs> 19 dead in a blazing apartment fire, all of them children, girl, friend. <laughs> The second, Weeping Angel sounds less like a spy program and more like a tactic your mom uses to keep you from masturbating. Look at the Weeping Angel, David. You did that, you made her cry. Now, thankfully, condemnation of Trump came fast, sometimes from unexpected quarters. A key White House advisory council of powerhouse CEOs voting to disband many of those business leaders, Democrats and Republicans speaking out, like the CEO of Campbell Soup saying racism and murder are unequivocally reprehensible and are not morally equivalent to anything else that happened in Charlottesville. Wow. <laughs> when you become CEO of Campbell Soup, you do not expect to have to start your public statements with the words racism and murder are unequivocally reprehensible. 
you expect to start them by saying, yes, we're very sorry, but again, you're the one eating clam chowder from a can. <laughs> And you know who might take issue with his statement that the white nationalists had nothing to do with Donald Trump? The white nationalists themselves. Because here is David Duke during yesterday's rally. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. That's what we believed in. That's why we voted for Donald Trump. Because he said he's going to take our country back. And that's what we got to do. I've got to say, David Duke and the Nazis really seem to like Donald Trump, which is weird, because Nazis are a lot like cats. If they like you, it's probably because you're feeding them. <laughs> also, 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 cats are like Nazis, but that's a whole different subject. <laughs>
I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. And President Xi was enjoying it. And I was given the message from the generals that the ships are locked and loaded. What do you do? And we made a determination to do it. Only Donald Trump could use a conversation about missile strikes in the Middle East to advertise the cake at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> Which, by the way, you might want to think twice about trying, given that just this week it was reported the club's kitchen was cited for 13 health code violations <laughs> for, among other things, fish that had not undergone proper parasite destruction and storing ham at 57 degrees. Because nothing says upscale dining like lukewarm ham with a side of tapeworm. Jurors in Tribble's case were actually told there was one chance in 10 million that it could be someone else's hair. And guess what? He was exonerated. Because once DNA analysis became available, his lawyer tested the 13 hairs from the case. And not only were none of them his, some of what they found was incredible. Nine of the hairs had come from the same source, a couple had come from different sources, and one was a doc. Two different FBI agents who had uh, looked at that and analyzed it didn't recognize that it was dog hair? It was a canine. It was a domestic dog, yes. My personal conclusion was the dog committed the crime. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so first, it is amazing that he is able to laugh at that. But second, if a dog did commit the crime, there's really no recourse there, because there is actually no law against dogs committing murder. And that's a fact that I learned in Air Bud 9, fuck the police. <laughs> Unfortunately, our buyout programs are hugely underfunded and prohibitively slow. It can take years for buyouts to get approved, by which point homeowners have probably had to rebuild their house at the government's expense, and it may have already flooded again. So, essentially, a government program that was supposed to help people in flooded homes is sometimes trapping them inside them indefinitely. And trapping people in structurally unsound homes isn't what the government is for, it's what buying the beach is for. <laughs> Look, th there just has to be a better way here, and there are some key things that we can do to improve this programme. We can do things like means test it, uh, and eventually get rid of discounts for second homes, and gradually increase the insurance rates on some properties so that they reflect actual risk. Unfortunately, the last time the Congress tried a major reform of the NFIP with the Bigot Waters Act of 2012, the result was that many people's rates skyrocketed overnight, and politicians were so spooked by angry constituents, they significantly scaled back many of the reforms. And it is frankly telling that even Fox News anchor Brett Bayer didn't stand behind the story. We love the judge. We love him here at Fox. But the Fox News division was never able to back up those claims. That is like how you talk about a racist grandparent. <laughs> we love Nana, we love her very much, but we cannot stand behind the things she says, nor would the rest of us use those specific words. Also, she has been watching The Wire. She's been watching The Wire. If Stringer Bell can say it, why can't she? That's her point. And, and while most now have condemned Weinstein's behavior, incredibly, some initially tried to defend him, from Oliver Stone, whose first response was, it's not easy what he's going through, to longtime friend Donna Karen, who took an incredible tack. How do we display ourselves? How do we present ourselves as women? What are we asking? Are we asking for it? It's not Harvey Weinstein. You look at everything all over the world today, you know, and how women are dressing and, you know, what they're asking by just presenting themselves the way they do. Excuse me? One, that is absolutely appalling. And two, how would Donna Karen know how women are dressing right now? It's not 1993. <laughs> Her most recent work included this hat. Well, howdy there, Your Excellency, if it ain't Pius the Kid, the cowboy pope. <laughs> now, Trump's actual speech patterns sound like when you write a long text by choosing only the predictive text your iPhone suggests for you. Seriously, we wrote a message like that, starting with the words, the nuclear, and here is what we got. The nuclear test program was not opposed by the other person who knows what they want and then the delay is not being done by any other country and that is not the only way to make sure the world can do more things and things like that and gentlemen and then the other people who have been told to leave them alone with their children who are also very sad. That makes exactly as much and potentially more sense 
from Trump's speech about the Iran nuclear deal, meaning an iPhone would be a more coherent president of the United States. There was a commercial flight departing just minutes earlier. That commercial flight would have cost between $500 and $700. And of course, there was also the option of Amtrak. A train from Washington to Philadelphia, even in first class, would have cost taxpayers no more than a few hundred dollars round trip. The same trip by car would have cost an estimated $18 in gasoline each way for an SUV. Oh, it gets worse, CNN. Price could have taken a Greyhound bus for either $10 or a hand job, or he could have just razor scooted himself there instead, or even, even, even maybe fired himself out of a cannon and saved us all a lot of money. And yet, according to Politico, he may have paid $25,000 for that trip, which is disgraceful. I mean, it, it is not as disgraceful as this actual mustache that he used to have, but still absolutely unforgivable. I mean, look at it. It's like his upper lip is being haunted by the mustache of a 17th century sex offender. <laughs> Butthoff ejaculated a cha-cha-cha. <laughs> but let, let's not kid ourselves here. This debate was only ever going to be about one person, and from the very first question, he was the focus of everyone's attention. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person. <laughs> Mr. Trump. Why is that audience acting surprised? That, that couldn't have been more of a setup for Trump if the prompt had been, raise your hand if your daddy left you millions of dollars instead of hugging you. 